Hi everyone, welcome to Woodworking Wisdom. My name's Colin Way, and today we're looking at finials and where we would use a finial and just some of the little hints, tips and tricks around them. So I've got three finials I'm going to turn to for you today and they're going to be a mixture of sizes so you can sort of spread them around your different projects. Um, and a finial is really just a finish to a design, a finish or a um, so top or bottom. So if you're thinking Christmas decorations, they will be the, the bottom. Um, if you're thinking the top of a little box, top of a hollow form, um, top of bed posts, all those sorts of things, that would be the finish. So the finial is the top um, of that design. So in most cases, when it comes to things like boxes um, and hollow forms, they want to blend into the shape uh, that you've turned. And when it comes to ends of curtain rails and, and bed posts, they can be a little bit chunkier. So I've done a couple here already that um, we're going to start with these two, actually. Um, these two uh, finials are the, the chunkier type. There's nothing um, really, really fine about these two. But it's a good way of practicing all those spindle turning techniques that we've picked up in the past few months or years. Um, and, and play with the skew chisels, the parting tools, beading and parting tools, all the, the general um, tools you would use for spindle turning, you know, spindle gouges and, and so on. So I've got purposely got three bits of timber here. We're going to do the, we're going to work from degrees of easy. Okay, so we're going with the big one first. That was going to be a finial like I've just showed you. Look, bed post, for instance. Then we're going to go on up, maybe a top of a hollow form, that sort of thing. So it's starting to get a little bit thinner when we start to go to these and um and in terms of your your thinnest thickness on your finial you can be going really really quite thin here um and then we'll end up with a little box top finial so when i'm talking boxes i mean little round boxes and you might want to do a finial i've got i own i'm very lucky to be able to own um, one of stuart mortimer's pieces and he's done a, um, a lovely kingwood um, box that i've got at home and a little tiny finial on top that stands around about it's around about 75 mil, about three inches long, as he's even done a little spiral, a little little twist on, on his finial as well. I'm not going to do that today, but um, just to you know, just to talk about things that can be done. So I've got, in terms of timbers, I've got a couple of pieces of beech for the big pieces and a piece of oak here. Uh, and it's worth considering uh, timber choices when you think about finials because, you know, if you're using a very soft, punky timber, you may run into a few problems when you go really, really thin. So pick timbers that are going to um, be structurally sound for the project that you're doing, for instance. Um, and with everything else, maybe not the thin one here, but for these first two finials, we're just going to rough these down to a cylinder first and create a hole point. So I'm going to first of all check which jaw I'm going to use. And I think we'll go with, um, I'm going to go with the O'Donnell jaws just looking at the sizes that I've got to work you you know you've got your own sizes of, of jaw that you're going to be working with I'm going to use this set here this is a set of O'Donnell's it takes me further away from the chuck as well if I use these um, little dovetail on the inside and that's what we're going to grip with so I'm going to just pop that that chuck to one side and we're going to do both of these pieces of timber okay that's actually getting close to the O'Donnell so what we'll do is well I'll show you a little trick on that in a minute actually let's just center up um, nothing grand on this to center up let's go mark engage and I'll do both of the pieces whilst I'm here little mark engage of course just get that roughly centered so scribe each face that leaves you a little square in the middle I'm not quite sure you can you can make that out but you can just see a little square in the middle which we can then brattle point we go same on this one again just brattle point it and whilst we're doing that let's do our smaller piece um, you're gonna adjust to center again There we are. You can probably see that square in the center a little bit better. There you go. That's much better. And just brattle point the center of that square. Look. Do the last one. Now we can brad point them both together. This one's going to be a little bit longer. Not quite so dumpy as the first one we're going to do. There we are. So everything's centered up. So between centers, I'm using this one, this this um, Pro Drive here. 
the pro drive is quite a good one it's um i don't have to knock the centers in um it'll just grab itself it's got those nice spurs on the outside of the its center point and on the tail socket i'm using a ring center just my favorite centers remember all we're doing here is creating a hole point for the chuck so i'm going to measure the chuck in a minute There we are. Everything's nice and sound. Make sure all the levers are done up. Everything's nice and tight. Lay speed down to zero. Turn the lathe on. I've already checked that no corners are going to touch the tool rest. Now I can turn the lathe speed up. And on this project, we're running at around about 1800 revs at the moment. Just to rough down to our cylinder. Now down to the cylinder, I want to maximise the, the material left. I don't want to go uh, too far. So let's adjust tool rest. We're now going to create the hole point. So I'm going to measure my chuck, or the internal grip of the chuck, off of camera. And then we're going to create a hole point there. So it's within the, the diameter of the piece. And then we'll cut that with a beading and parting tool. So I'm going to use the the calipers just to gauge when we're down to the right diameter and they'll just fall over look so that's our diameter so I'm going to keep them there for the minute I'm just going to go slightly deeper and then tidy up the end grain all the way down the center that'll do us so that's that piece ready. So whilst we're here, like I said, we're going to do the other blank. This one's slightly different though, because the diameter for that foot is actually smaller than the diameter of the timber that we've got in this blank. Okay, so what I'm going to do is we're going to start knocking corners off and I'm just going to, without touching the timber, I'm going to use the calipers to give me an idea of where, um, where I'm going to start cutting a, a, a foot in. Like I said, if I just rough this down to a cylinder I would have gone too far so let's just take the corners off first right, I'm going to stop there so that you can see maybe come down the line there Ben let's just stand that up you can see where those calipers are resting so pretty much where we go that ghosting finishes so I'm going to take a rough cut. I don't want to touch on because I've got corners there still. So. I reckon about there. Without touching, I'm just going to off the calipers up. Yes, that's it. We're fine there. So that, that works. So I can leave that. I'm not going to take any more corners. Certainly not here anyway. But we're still going to take the, uh, the end grain down nice and smooth. Are. so that foot's ready i still want to leave a little shoulder here i don't want to go all the way down to that same level but i can take the rest of this away up here and again down to a cylinder but just leaving a little shoulder. And the reason that we do this, if we leave this shoulder here, it gives it far more strength when being held in the chuck. It gives another surface for the chuck jaw to bind up onto or against. Um, and also it's a way of uh, leveling out, keeping everything nice and, and um, central as well. So that's those two pieces done. So I'm gonna put this one to one side and we can get the chuck mounted on the lathe. We might need the tailstock in a minute, so I'm going to keep the tailstock on the machine. There we 
go. You can go over. It's gonna fit in there. Nice little grip. Now, if you get any movement here at all, this can be taken off. But there it's not too bad actually. So what I'm gonna do, get the tailstock working. Because we can, it's always good to start with. And your project now has to start, or you have to do it in sections. So we can't take this area down and have this really thin and then carry on working up here. So we work from this section back. So we're gonna rough down the, the basic, um, uh, you know, get rid of the bulk, and then we can start shaping. So I'll do my first couple of inches, um, get that finished to thickness, then I'll come back and do the next bit and so on. All right, it just keeps strength uh, in the workpiece. So rough down to a little bit of a final size. So 1800-ish. go so my first feature uh, this is going to involve the skew so I'm going to start with a small skew um, the first feature is just a little V cut we're going to round over so I'm going to plane first and then we're going to round over so I'm going to use the heel because I want the bevel rubbing as well and just on these smaller areas, the heel means I can get right in there. Then the toe just to give me a little bit of definition afterwards. This section now needs to come all the way down. So I will lose the tail stock. Tail stock comes out the way. I'm going to go over to a spindle gadget. And what I can also do is get that tool rest in nice and close now though. Have a look. A little spindle gouge that some finials, especially um, finials on uh, buildings. You'll have a little, a non-round uh, section called a, um, a bouquet. And that generally is a building only feature. Just like a little topper really. There we are, that's the, that's the top section. Let's get rid of a little bit more of that, that waste material to do our next feature. Next feature here is going to be quite a, a thin area. And we're going to go with another V cut. So we're pretty much repeating what we've already done. Now, don't forget what this is for. I don't want this an ultra thin. This is going to be a a finial for the top of a bed post for the end of a, a curtain rail. Those sorts of things. They do. They don't want to be fragile. So we're going to keep it little bit chunkier but by starting at the tailstock end and working back we're keeping strength there we are that's as thin as I want to be really we're keeping a little bit of strength in the piece And as much as a practical project, this one, of course, is is great practice for all these spindle spindle tools. So 
So we're going to have another V cut up with a tool rest now. We're getting into serious sort of dimensional timber. Another little clean up. And then a round over. And this now is going to go into an OG. There we are, a little OG, and then, sorry, a little bead, now into an OG. Little bit, so we're using the bowl gouge and the spindle gouge there. I just want to crisp up the bottom of this V cut here. Look, now look at that difference. It really makes everything jump out a little bit more. So we're getting towards the final shape. In fact, let's put our parting tool cut to where this piece is going to finish. And of course, you're going to do create a. Um, Tenon on the bottom of one of these, you'll you will know the spindle uh, mortar size. So you can do your tenon. So that we've got a fillet down the bottom. Fillet is just this flat area here. Now I'm going to round over one more time. That's it. All right. That. Just clean up this other V cut. We are so whatever tenon you've decided to go to, and I would assume you know around about twenty five to thirty mil would be fine. So let's go down to that. And at this stage you'd be measuring. So you'd be getting your calipers out, you'd measure that your, your little tenon there is the right um, diameter. And then we can think about parting off. Of course we'd need to sand this. Again be a little bit careful, you've worked hard to get those shapes. So sand synthetically to the piece. So um, when it comes to corners, just be careful of courses. Manipulate and mould the, uh, the abrasive to suit. Okay, now we can pass off. So we've sanded, or we're going to pretend we've sanded, and now all I'm going to do is down to our parted area. Then that then is going to sit neatly either on the top of the bedpost or on the end of a, um, a curtain rail, um, but or even things like grandfather clocks you know anything architectural what we don't want this doing is like on a, the top of a newel post or anything like that this is this could potentially be dangerous these need to be put out the way okay so these for high things that uh, that, that aren't going to get uh, young hands and things um, impaled on so that's our that's our first one quite a big thick chunky finial um, and remember where the word comes from it comes from finish so it's it means um, the, the end, the finish of something, so it's going to be the end of our bedpost, the end of our, our curtain pole. 
Okay, so that's that one done. We're now going to go over to the smaller bit. So if you remember the smaller finial, that's going to be for the top of our hollow form. Now, it's not quite as important on this one. Um, well, similarly to the one we've just turned, actually, this is not going to be um, in a danger zone. You know, people aren't going to fall on top of it. This is the intention of this one. It's a, almost like a lid to our, our hollow form. And the intention of those is that they're going to be put on the shelf and out the way. So we can go a little bit thinner if we want to. Similarly to the um, one we're going to do for the, the box in a second. Um, so let's take a little bit more of that excess away. Don't go too much though. Remember we want strength at this end. So what I'm going to do is start tapering. So hollow form size, that will obviously depend depend on the hollow form you're turning. So let's get back to my skew. Let's say this one, I don't know. Let's say this one is around about 200 to 8 inches in diameter and about 10 inches high. My hollow form that I'm decorating with this finial. And then we're going to round over it exactly like we did before. There we are. That's done. What I need to do now is get rid of the tail stock. Get that out the way. We can then take, with a spindle gouge, the next section down. So, down to our point. Remember that we've just had the tail stock up there. So, there will be a very small hole at the end. So, allow for that. Let's get rid of that nib. There we are. Tidy that up. Then you can shape. Good. Like that. Come back a little bit rounder on this one. There we are. And if you need to, use the long tip of the skew just to get in okay next bit so i'm gonna to go to a bowl gouge now to rough out get some of this diameter out of our way now even though this is a it can be a little bit more delicate what i don't want to go is ultra thin so we're going to go ultra thin on the box lid in a minute but for this one let's do another bead Don't go down too thin. I'll finish that in a minute. So you can see what I mean. I'm leaving a little bit of body here. That would change if you wanted to do something like I was mentioning earlier with, with Stuart's. If you wanted to do a little bit of spiralling, then obviously you'd allow for your spiralling. You'd have a longer, straighter area. And maybe there you wanted to go a little bit thinner. But, but at the moment, I want to keep it sort of medium in terms of thickness. There we are. Round. Now I can take this down to the final thickness, which is literally just a clean up. Because we're not adding any stress on here now, apart from sanding, there's going to be nothing to worry about. Um, and now we can start taking a bit more away. Now I'm going to leave. 
nice big bead in there. Down to our final thickness in here. There we are, that's fine. Now we're getting toward the end of this box top. And we would have just put a very slight curve on this one. Um, I was just about to say we would have either threaded this or um, just, a, a, again, a tenon. So I think I'm going to introduce that now. We also need to know how big this outer diameter is going to be because that's got to fit on top of the, the hollow form. Again, you would have prepped that. What I like to do is have them sort of falling over the top of the hollow form. So it, um, it doesn't rest in, it rests over. And so you literally get away with a little bit more. To be able to do that, you need to just put a little inward cut in, which I'm going to do. Um, and very slightly radius the outside edge. I think that looks quite nice. Um, but don't forget, we want to follow the flow of the, the pot. So let's give ourselves a bit more of a, an angle there. There we are. So we're not being ultra delicate, but on the other hand, we're being far less chunky than we were on this one. If you look at this one, there's a little bit more sort of size to this one. So let's finish the um, outer edge off. I'm going to pretend our, our tenon is, is done. We'll create the tenon. There we are. Let's say that's our tenon size. And that's where we'll pass off in a minute. And so this rests neatly on the underside. I'm just going to very slightly undercut that top. So just using the skew angle. Now why I've done that, if you think about a hollow form coming up with a curve at the top, this wants to sit down without having too much of a gap there. So I've gone in at a, a very slight angle to allow that to happen so it sits over the top of the hollow form nicely. Um, we'll also put a little, little bit of a radius. There we go. Again, because we can. And let's bring that radius over. And just a little V cut there. Okay. So let me part that off. You can see it properly once it's, once it's off. Obviously at this stage will be your, your time to sand. So you can see how that's going to sit inside the hollow form. We've got our tenon here. This needs to be cleaned up, obviously. Got our tenon here, and that would be our, our box 
top. There are other things you can do to embellish these. Don't forget you've got things like um, um, embellishing tools. So all of the, um, the t uh, texturing, spiral and texturing tools, things like decorating elves. Um, you can use the indexing on your lathe to create um, stop positions to retexture as well. Um, sort of basket weave, so beading and then um, and then cross cutting are also available to you. So there's lots of options when it comes to that one. So that's the, the next stage down again. We've gone from quite thick and chunky. Okay, and we've gone down a little bit, sorry, get it in position, a little bit thinner. So now we're going to go thin, thin. So this is going to be our little turn box lid. Um, and we can get away with quite a lot in here in terms of um, being really, really thin. I'm going to change the jaws. But the downside of having a very thin finial, of course, is there's tendency for whip. So you've got to be a little bit careful with that. Again, it's, it's now probably more important than ever that we start at that tail stock end and work our way back. Um, but let's just show you a couple of ways of supporting. I'm going to use a pen jaw, only because the blank I'm using here is, a, is pen size, pen blank size. And so you use whatever you have to hand. So... I know I've got a split on this piece there, somewhere, right in there, look. All right, so I'm just going to avoid that. That's going to go in the waste area. We also will work with... I'm going to go a little bit longer. There we are. I'm not going to bother with the tailstock on this piece. I'm going to start right away, nice and close, down to a cylinder first. You can use a roughing gouge on this one if you want to. You can use a bowl gouge if you want to. I'm going to go bowl gouge, I think, because of the size. Down to a cylinder. Now, let me just grab a couple of extra small tools. So I've got a small spindle gouge. I'm going to get a small skew chisel. Um, really, just to cope with that size. So there we go. So much smaller tools, which will be needed in a minute. So I've got my small spindle gouge, small skew chisel. I'll show you the sizes. Okay, so completely different from our, our large ones. However, I will still use the little 12 mil. That's still a handy tool to use. But when I need to get these smaller features done, it's a little bit easier. So let's make this quite elongated. Not too thin at this stage. Remember, we need to do the shaping. We can always clean that up afterwards. Delicate cuts, don't go too, too heavy handed on these, otherwise things just shear away. But let me just show you one other thing. So whilst we're looking at this area here, you can also, there's a little bit of a cheat. You don't have to just rely on the turning, you can, now we're talking small, small areas. We can sand this down. This is a 100 grit abrasive. You wanted to make it thinner without actually turning it. We can make that little area thinner just by sanding it away. Just a quick note here on um, lathe speeds. 
time you start getting to smaller diameters like this, that's that surface speed is quite slow. So you might have to whip that laser speed up a little bit. There we are. See how thin that's becoming. Now obviously you go for your abrasives after you've done that to clean everything up. But that's that first feature done. So I'm going to take the, the V-cut down to its final size, which is quite small. Now we mentioned about supporting these. This is going to get quite thin and whip can occur. A couple of little tricks. Now I'm not going to take ownership of this trick. This is the MacGyver of turning um, has been talking to me, Jason. And he's come up with this little idea. This is our, one of our little um, pen tailstock centers. This is an electrical clip that goes in there. And then you've got a nice little gripping area for the end of our our little finio that will support it the only thing you have to be careful of when you're doing things like this though if you're stop and start in the lathe the weight pure weight of that center if this is particularly thin and we're talking down to a couple of mil then that can create quite a shearing um a force against that 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 finial so just be aware of that be careful um, if you're stop and start in the lathe uh, it can cause you a few problems I'm going to do nothing. I'm not going to support it. I want to make this as thin as I physically can. So let's take a little bit more of this waste away. This box lid is going to end about here. This box lid, this box lid finial, sorry, is going to end about there. Um, so now, a bit more waste. This is going to be a really thin piece, so... Remember, we're working back to the headstock. So if I make the, the tailstock end thin, that's fine. I can work heavy to my left, but not to my right. Now we'll carry on doing this all the way back. See, working here, that's quite sound. That's not giving me any issues at all. Working up here, we're getting a lot more flex. And that will become even greater the further down I go. So I'm going to start working back a little bit at a time. Keeping that diameter the same. A little bit more waste away. Round over. Just tidy that last little area up there. It's a little bit of a lump. using that bevel just to support the cut as we're cutting. Uh, 
and all the way down. Now I can go to my final depth and crisp that bottom up there, look. So we're making that nice and clean and crisp. Right, I'm going to end this shape with a little, a little um, cove. Clean up that V cut. In fact, let's make that a little bit smaller. Now, what I've got to do that with is, at the moment, is just my spindle gouge. I can't quite get in there, so let me just change to another uh, mini tool, and I'm going to change to a little round nose scraper, um, which is nice and tiny. So it's this one here. Now that's going to get me right in there, right into that little cove. I'm just going to swap my handle around. Nice little um, tools, these micro tools. It gives me a chance to, especially on this sort of project, to go really tiny. And so handle high, because we're using a scraper. If you've wanted to use something like a little um, a little spiral in there or create something like a little spiral in there, you can. And when it comes to sand, you just watch your pressure. Um, support both sides. You can make this a little bit thinner again if you sand with a, a fairly coarse paper and then work your way through. But look, just support. Just supporting everything as I'm working it, look. Just keeping that, that finial nice and supported. There. So then you go through the whole sanding process. Let's reposition that tool rest. And when you've done that, that's going to be your capping area. That's going to be your finial to go on your box lid um, for your little delicate boxes. So you can go really, really quite thin on those. Let's part this one off as if, as if we were to finish. Going to leave a tenon on this one. If we would normally use a tenon to seat. And apart from just having to remove that last little bit of waste just on here, that would be finished. So you can use the tenon to, uh, um, to fit it onto your box lid, or you can just sink this area into your box if you're going to create a little recess in the, in the box lid as well. But that one's completely different. Much more um, delicate compared to these two. They all go down slightly in diameters. They get a little bit more fragile the, the further you go. Of course, you don't have to put a point on the top. You can just have a ball-ended top. You can go for a bouquet in the top. If you want to carve something to go on the top of them. Um, that is entirely up to you. But there we are. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, that's just a very, very brief look at finials, where I would use finials. And we've gone with fairly, I don't want to say bland timbers. We've gone fairly pale timbers. But of course, if you're making a box, if you're making a, um, a, a hollow form, you may want to go with a contrasting um, really really colorful timber or even paint them is entirely up to you but there don't forget what i say every single time if you like what you see give us a thumbs up um subscribe to our channel and share us around with all your friends until next time thank you very much and bye bye <laughs>